Unfortunately, the normals editing within Blender at the moment are a little bit underdeveloped. Um, there's, uh, they could probably use a little bit of love and attention because there's, uh, for example, no vertex normal editing tool. There's no way to set the vertex normal to a precise value. Um, this is, of course, could be changed at any time. Um, it's just a matter of getting a developer on it, um, getting enough money together, or uh, just enough people just requesting that feature, I suppose. But um, as, as it stands at the moment, there's no way to uh, lock or unlock normals. Um, there is a way to uh, average the normals of the object, though. For example, we've got this object here, which is just a cube and a sphere attached together, um, combined together. What we can do is we can tab into edit mode and we can see we've got all the faces selected there. I can just press A to toggle the selection of all the faces on and off. Um, now that we've got them all selected, what I can do is uh, we can press the control F shortcut key and we can see here we've got um, uh, shade smooth and shade flat. These are the options, essentially average vertices and set to face, which is which are the two options that we would get in uh, Maya. So if we just select shade smooth now, we can see the sphere um, is has this um, smooth calculation of um, normals across its surface there now. And then the cube here is looking a little bit uncomfortable at its corners as it tries to stretch the normal round. Um, some um, uh, 90 degree corners there. Uh, so just to reverse that, just to set to face as it were, we can just press Control F again and then shade flat and then we get this uh, faceted look to the sphere again um, where it looks like a disco mirror ball kind of an idea and then we get this uh, cube is doing what a cube does best now as it looks a lot healthier uh, on its edges. Um, so uh, that's the basic way in which we would duplicate that kind of behavior within Blender. In order to reverse the direction of a face's normal uh, within Blender, all we would need to do is just select the face there and then um, bring up the faces menu with Control F. And then at the top here, we've got flip the normals. Uh, there's another way of being able to find this tool, by the way, which is just um, within the mesh menu here of the 3D views header. Uh, we can see that we get the uh, faces menu there. In fact, we can see the Control F that we would have just pressed um, to bring up this menu. At the top there is the flip normals. We've also got a normals menu, which isn't assigned to any hotkey there. Uh, there's nothing stopping us to uh, assign that to something though. Uh, but anyway, we've got flip normals within there as well. So I'm just going to go into this uh, Control F shortcut um, menu and just, just to bring up the faces options here. And we'll, I'm just going to use this flip normals. Initially, nothing's happened. Um, we can see we have used the tool. Uh, we get the uh, this readout here, flip normals. In fact, we can also bring up the F6 um, last used tool uh, menu as well. This is a, quite a basic tool, so not, there's nothing really to add. Um, it just gives us the name of it. Uh, but the reason that we can't see anything in there is because um, we need to indicate to the shading that we don't want to have any back faces visible. So if we just come over to here in the properties sidebar, we can see under the display settings, we've got this back face calling here. So if we just click this on, we can see now it appears um, initially that potentially uh, we've deleted the face or something, but we can still see if we look a little carefully, um, we can see that orange dot there in the center of the face, just showing that there is actually a face there. I'd just like to point out something else is that with this tool here, we've got this limit selection to visible, which is currently selected, uh, which means if I was to border select the whole cube now with the B key, we can see that none of these faces at the back that the camera couldn't see were, were uh, selected. Um, this is despite the fact that um, this face was in the way and with the normals um, facing the other way. That's, this isn't necessarily normal driven. So we can see that it has actually selected that. In fact, if I just do that again, just deselect everything with the A key. Press B for border select, just left select across the screen, across the cube. And then um, we can see that that face has actually been selected. So um, if we wanted to be able to select everything in the cube, we would need to turn that off. So, so if I just press B again and then do that again, we can see everything's been selected now. Yeah, I'm just going to put this on just to uh, make the point that uh, just really just bear in mind the uh, directions of normals isn't actually going to affect it. It's more to do with the uh, camera location of what faces it can see. So really, it's just the fact that this face, it, can, it is aware that this face is in, is in front of those others. Uh, in fact, if we actually just flip the, those, Control F, flip normals, um, and now just deselect those, we can see that we won't be able to select them. I'm just pointing this out, I'm laboring this point really, just purely because um, you may expect that this front face here that's flipped the other way wouldn't select, yet these two in the background would. So if I just press B again and just uh, 
just uh, left select across the cube again, we can see that nothing behind those faces has been selected. And it's just to do with the behavior of this uh, option down here at the bottom. And then we'll just uh, do an equivalent of Myers conform tool, which is just going to um, have all the form, uh, have all the normal space, basically uh, the majority way. So we've got the uh, majority of faces of uh, pointing outwards here. So if we just go down to mesh, uh, in fact, in the tool shelf here, I'll just point out that these tools show up here as well. We've got recalculate, just going to press recalculate there. And we can see now that the uh, the cubes basically pointed all the uh, normals out uh, outside. It's just a, um, it's useful if you've got an unusual set of uh, normals facing in various different ways. Um, that's just the Myers conform tool, the equivalent for, of which within Blender. So I'd just like to mention some of the ways in which we can visualize the normals within the uh, the 3D view here. Um, as long as we're in edit mode, um, so we can toggle from object mode to edit mode with the tab key. And uh, we can come over to the property sidebar here. We can toggle this on and off with the N key. And then if we just come over to the mesh display area and we can see under the normal section, we've got these two icons here for vertices and faces. And we've got the size of the normals here that we can manipulate. Um, so if we just take a little look at this cube now, uh, we can see that the vertices, we, in fact, we get this darker blue line for the vertices and we get these, uh, this sort of cyan type blue for the faces. And um, there's something strange about this uh, cube that you might notice, especially if you're used to coming from Maya, which is the fact that although this cube has got quite solid and hard uh, 90 degree edges to it, um, and when we uh, visualize the normals, we, it appears that the normals have been completely averaged. So we would expect a completely smooth area to this face. So within Maya, the way this would be um, visualized is you would get three points emitting uh, in the direction of every face there. So um, that's kind of maybe a little bit confusing if you're used to um, working within Maya's uh, normals uh, in the viewport there to just see what's going on. Uh, so that might um, trip you up slightly. So I just thought that might be worth noting. In fact, if I just highlight that face and then go control L to select everything in that, uh, selected that face, and then go shift D to just duplicate that. I'm just going to um, middle click uh, to the side there just to duplicate this geometry. Um, and uh, so that we can see it separately. Now what I'm going to do is just going to bring up the faces menu with control F and then shade smooth. And now we can see that basically uh, nothing's changed. So for example, if I just tab into object mode, we can see the normals of these two objects are obviously completely different. But if we just, um, just increase the size slightly, we can see that they're basically exactly the same normals. And we can see from the edges there, the, the uh, vertices in the corners are all basically doing exactly the same thing. So um, in fact, if we just keep an eye on the normals now and just go and um, if just do the, pull this menu up away from the cube and just go shade flat, just note that nothing's going to um, change again. So I'll go three, two, one, flat. So although the actual normals have changed, none of the visualization of the directions of the normals have changed. Um, so that's just something worth noting there. So uh, let's just talk about the um, setting the normals for the uh, the smooth and hard normals for the edges now. So I'm just going to delete those faces there with the X key. Um, and in fact, I'm just going to delete this object entirely and just create a sphere. So I'm just going to go Shift A and create a sphere. Um, just bring that off to the side there. So at the moment, I'm just going to uh, shade ev everybody smooth by default there, just with the Control F shortcut key. Um, now we've got this. Uh, sphere here with everything shaded smooth. In fact, if we just turn on the um, visualization of those and just drop that right down just to make it quite small, just holding shift while I slide there just to get a finer control. Um, what we can see is we get in, we're getting uh, what appears to be right there. Uh, but basically working within Maya, you're probably used to working with the normals of edges so, because this gives us our most versatility, really. This would allow us to, say, uh, make a distinction between the top half and the bottom half of this sphere, which is something probably more desirable than working at a face by face level, which is kind of Blender's default working within uh, normals. Um, so if I actually just um, grab uh, those, that edges, uh, this edge, there is a kind of a way to mimic that sort of behavior. What we can do is we can go control E to bring up our edges menu this time and just go mark sharp. And now what's happened is if I, if I press A to deselect everything, we can see this kind of cyan um, edge 
to that, uh, it's basically that edge that we had selected is taken on this uh, cyan type look now. Um, just going to uh, just remove those overlays there, by the way. Um, <clears throat> in fact, we're getting some uh, crazy ideas here in the visualization. I don't know whether this is just because of the way I'm recording or not, but uh, anyway, uh, we get this cyan color here to the uh, the edges um, that we've marked sharp. And uh, but if we tab back into object mode, we can see that nothing's actually happened. If I come over to the modifiers and then uh, bring in the edge split modifier, um, we can see that now we've actually got the uh, that that split now. So this is kind of marked it as a, a harsh edge there, this hard edging. If I just turn off the sharp edges, uh, we can see we're back to where we were there. So that's uh, just something to make note of. So if I just um, switch the sharp edges on again, uh, we can see that there. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, in fact, just delete that sphere now and just bring in the monkey head and this uh, affectionately titled Suzanne. Um, just to anthropomorphize it slightly I guess but I've just go to um, the tab key there just go control F shade the smooth and then come to the modifier and then bring in that edge split modifier again we can say see we get kind of a um, kind of a robotic kind of a look um, by default because the edge angle is set to 30 degrees but if we just turn it off and just um, concentrate on the sharp edges if I just grab um, oops if I just grab the um, uh, press A to deselect everybody I'm just going to switch the edge um, selection method there and just going to grab those three edges and just go control E and then mark them sharp and then we can see that it's created a sharp edge along th that, that um, area there. So this is one of the ways in which we can kind of duplicate that behavior um, which uh, which is the way that we might work with um, uh, in, within Maya. If I just move this off to the side, I'm just going to do one more thing and just demonstrate with the cube the visualization of the normals again. So if I just um, just come to the normals, show the normals there, just raise the size of that slightly and then uh, drop that modifier on there again and then the edge split, just turn that off. So if I just um, sh uh, sharpen all the edges here, just go control E and go mark sharp, we can see we get this cyan colored thing there. In fact, I've just uh, forgotten a step. If I just go control F and then shade everybody smooth first, and then go control E and then mark the sharp, we can see that we do in fact get um, the sharp edges there. But if we turn off the visualization of the modifier, we should get, um, oops, the modifier which is the eye icon there we should get a completely smooth uh, cube there so we, we're getting that effect there so if i just switch that back on we can see that our sharp edges for that we uh, indicated within the edges are being preserved there in fact there is an additional thing in which we can click on this apply modifier to the editing case during the edit mode so seeing how we're in the edit mode now if we just click this on we can see finally if i just drop the size slightly more um, that that is the way that Maya would define its uh, the way the normals would look within Maya. So uh, this might help you out in um, essentially duplicating this kind of the methods in which Maya would work within Blender and particularly with the edges. Uh, the thing about this is that um, this also allows us to, if I just grab this face here, uh, I can move this edge around and it's completely attached and everything. So um, that's it preserves that kind of uh, the, the way that behavior occurs. Um, the, the, the thing is, is if we actually just apply this modifier, we can, uh, in fact, if we just get out of uh, object mode and just apply that modifier there, we can see if we tab back into edit mode and grab that face again, we can see it's basically split the all the edges and um, that's basically what the modifier does. And that's why that we were getting a better readout of the uh, normals there. Um, the, the truth is, is that's um, pretty much what, a, say, a game engine would do anyway. It, uh, any of the hard edges here it would actually split that geometry and create extra vertices and so on. So that's just something just to uh, worth, which is worth noting, really. I just wanted to point that out in which the ways in which we would um, manipulate the normals. In fact, it's probably just a good idea just to highlight in case you didn't notice uh, if I just press A to select everybody and then go control E to bring up our edges menu. We've also got the clear sharp there as well. So we can just clear the sharp there. In fact, if we just bring on the edge split modifier, um, sharpen edges and the edge angle there. So we can see that um, if we go control E and mark sharp, we've got all our sharp edges now. If I go control E and clear sharp, again, it's uh, smooth. One last thing I'd just like to point out about normals within Blender is uh, using this uh, monkey head Suzanne. Uh, we can see that it's actually quite 
uh, heavily subdivided and um, it's quite smooth shade or the shading for, of the normals is quite smooth throughout and now if we just come over to the object data um, for this particular object and we can see there is a normal section there and if we just click on auto smooth now uh, you can see that basically nothing happens in the 3d view the angle is set really really low so we would expect practically every face to be quite faceted um, quite set to hard uh, on every edge um, but obviously that isn't what we're seeing in the viewport. This is just because um, basically this is a render only um, operation. So if we just go to render now with F12, we can see that we do in fact get quite a heavily faceted. We can see all these sharp edges here in the view in, in this render now. Um, basically I've just switched on in the world tab, by the way, I've just switched on ambient occlusion there, which is why we're getting this kind of overall lighting and not just, uh, for example, if I just turn that off and just render again, you can see the kind of render that we're getting. So just I'm cranking the ambient occlusion up just to give it a little bit more overall lighting. Um, so I just thought I'd point that out as well. Um, so if we actually just now, I'm just going to, after this is finished rendering, I'm just going to move this to slot, um, let's just say slot eight. Uh, and then just come back to the object data panel there. I'm just going to press escape just to exit that render view as well. And just kind of crank that right up to its maximum, which is 80 degrees. And then just render again. And we should be able to see that it's um, a much smoother view. Uh, in fact, we can just should be able to toggle between the two views now. So you can see that was uh, with the auto smooth set to one. And this is now set to 80. And then you can see... Uh, the differences. So that's basically just a render only uh, operation there. Um, so just in case you come rooting around here and you see this panel, just uh, thought I'd just mention that one other thing to do with normals within Blender.